All right, everyone, let's begin talking about explosive eruptions. <clears throat> Up to this point, we've described all the different types of eruptions, and we've looked at peaceful eruptions. Uh, now it's time to roll up our sleeves and really look at these ones that cause lots of devastation and damage, these ones that are dreaded volcanoes, the ones that when you close your eyes and think about a volcano, these are what come to mind, uh, the explosive eruptions and resulting volcanic landforms. So let's take a look. We'll go through a Strombolian, which are kind of small to moderate explosive eruptions. Volcanian, which are the kind of clearing the throat phase of a more major eruption. And then the Plinian are the uh, granddaddy of the eruptions. Uh, lava domes then would be um, kind of a little um, mini eruption atop a, a volcano that's already erupted. So we'll talk about those as well. All right, here's a review of the types of eruptions, noting that the non-explosive ones are what we see in Iceland and Hawaii, the Icelandic and Hawaiian style. Icelandic produced those volcanic plateaus and Hawaiian volcanoes produced those shield volcanoes, both either gently sloping or flat lying because they're created from basaltic magma, which is the type of magma that comes from the mantle. Uh, the explosive kind now, we're getting into the basaltic and andesitic magmas. This is what we would see in our Strombolian type of eruptions, and they create uh, unique features called cinder cones. These are like little uh, smaller versions of volcanoes. And then the uh, strata volcanoes, those are what we get build up when we get into the more explosive kind. When we get into explosives, we're looking at andesitic and rhyolitic magmas, which are the melted magmas that we find at subduction zones. And all that water vapor comes together to create some pretty massive and violent eruptions through Volcanian, Plinian, uh, Stratovolcano, and Stratovolcano. Now there is a class of uh, eruptions called Ultraplinian that we'll talk about, and these are, these are catastrophic, and we'll discuss those next time. So let's first start with Strombolian. They're named after Stromboli in Italy, which is a volcano that's been erupting almost daily for millennium. There's kind of a central lake of lava there with a thin crust that breaks easy and allows frequent little eruptive blasts of lava and pyroclastic debris. Um, you would see these as being rated a VEI of about a 2. Um, remember VEI being Volcanic Explosivity Index. Uh, Stromboli is what we would call a cinder cone, and cinder cones are low conical hills of basaltic to andesitic pyroclasts, and remember pyroclasts are like the larger ones like fish tank size rock called lapilli, uh, baseball size rocks, uh, volcanic bombs, and volcanic blocks, uh, but cinder cones have uh, summit craters with lava lakes. They're typically pretty steep sided. Uh, and what will happen is the magma will intrude into the neck of the volcano and then stall after the volcano is kind of done erupting. And so what you'll be left with is this beautiful cinder cone here, which you see pictured on the lower left. Eventually that'll wear away. And what will be left behind is this volcanic neck, which is actually uh, more resistant to weathering. And so you'll see these a lot in the desert southwest and areas uh, where you see these buttes. Here is a famous uh, flat, flat topped volcanic deck called Devil's Tower that we we see in um, uh, the southeastern uh, 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 part of Wyoming. Actually, the I guess the northeastern part of Wyoming. But um, it's a volcanic neck where the magma intruded into the rock, kind of pushed the rock upward, and then all the rock wore away and, and left what was left behind is this volcanic neck. Uh, the hexagonal and geometric uh, breakage patterns uh, caused this thing to, to have major columns. And lots of people like to climb it, and um, there's a little walk that goes around it. And it's a really neat place to visit. Paracutan in Miochocan, Mexico is another example of one of these cinder cones. Uh, it's a really kind of formed itself in a, a series of uh, just over a decade born in a farm field and built up, uh, including burying two towns. Um, it's uh, kind of an infamous uh, cinder cone. Now the next class is Volcanian. Volcanian eruptions were first seen in north part of Sicily. And so these eruptions, they were named after the Roman god of fire, Vulcan. And what these are is they're kind of smaller eruptions. Sometimes they even occur with larger eruptions. So uh, kind of a smaller eruption of a pyroclastic cloud that rises up and sometimes even collapses back down. Um, or an early eruptive phase 
uh, kind of the clearing of the volcano's throat before it has that final Plinian blast. But these form atop stratovolcanoes, and we typically see these in the island arc and volcanic arc uh, environments uh, that we discussed um, prior to this. Uh, island arc, remember, are formed from oceanic oceanic subduction, and oceanic continental form the volcanic arc, the uh, coastal volcanoes like Mount St. Helens and the Cascades. So let's talk Pliny interruptions then. These are actually called Pliny interruptions because they're named after Pliny the Younger, who described the 79 AD eruption of Mount Vesuvius. Um, this was the Iumphibus eruption that buried the cities of Pompeii, the city of Pompeii in pyroclastic debris and Herculaneum in a mud flow. Um, these are the final eruptive phase. These vertical columns of pyroclast can, and tephra can be shot uh, 50 kilometers into the air or more. Uh, you have thick, um, it leaves behind thick alternating layers of magma and pyroclasts and, and lava flows and pyroclasts. And so as a result, the strata or layering uh, gives them the name stratovolcanoes. These also then are occurring um, because of melted magma supercharged with water vapor that rises the magma to the surface and explodes it outwards at island arcs and volcanic arcs. The Plinian style eruptions can create volcano weather. So much steam and ash goes into the air that it creates this muddy volcanic rain. Um, uh, it's pretty um, kind of a crazy uh, sort of side note that happens there. And of course, this rain can mix with the ash uh, and create mud flows uh, that can be devastating as well. These mud flows are called lahars. It's the Indian word for mud flow, or Indonesian word for mud flow, that is. And we'll, um, we'll talk about those when we talk about volcanic hazards. Um, going back to that 79 AD eruption at Mount Vesuvius, it was a Plinian style eruption from a stratovolcano. Um, and what happened was that it, it released this this massive pyroclastic cloud, this fire rock cloud that billowed outward at speeds of uh, 60 to 100 miles an hour. This is burning hot ash, gas, and air at like 850 degrees C, filled with pyroclast and tephra. It would, it would blow over anything in its path, and it entombed in the city of Pompeii. Uh, they went... Uh, Archaeologists went in and excavated the site and found people in, in positions of anguish as they uh, lay, lay dying there uh, from this horrible um, type of death in a pyroclastic flow. Uh, a mud flow went and buried the city of Herculaneum 20 meters deep uh, in a lahar. So very vicious eruption here. You can see that the top of the mountain blew off. This is Mount Vesuvius here. It used to be much taller, of course. And what's crazy about this picture is you can see that all along the foothills of Mount Vesuvius is populated with over three million people. Three and a half million people lie in the shadow of this monster that buried cities in, in the past. So this is uh, uh, a place where uh, probably the highest population density of anywhere in the world where they're threatened by a volcano. Uh, so there's a false sense of security because this ma the magma chamber has been quiet, but it's still active. So um, this is kind of a dangerous situation. Plinian style eruptions come out of stratovolcanoes. These are steep sided symmetrical volcanic peaks. They have alternating layers of pyroclastic debris and andesitic dryolitic lava flows. Uh, and this is where you get your volcanian and plinian eruptions out of. When you think about a volcano, these are what you think about. These are really tall mountains too, very highly pop piled up um, debris uh, from previous eruptions, so high that they have snow caps. Uh, a famous picture of Mount Rainier there on the bottom left and Mount Fuji in Japan on the bottom right, uh, both stratovolcanoes. Uh, Mount Rainier caused by the volcanic arc of the Cascades the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate underneath the North American plate, and Mount Fuji in Japan, they're an oceanic-oceanic convergence creating the vol uh, volcanic Jap Japanese islands. Uh, another example of these is Mount Pele. Mount Pele, a stratovolcano, had a Plinian-style eruption on May 8th of 1902. This was the largest and deadliest eruption of the 1900s. Uh, it killed 36 plus thousand people in a Plinian eruption that sent a pyroclastic flow and basically buried the, the capital of uh, this era of uh, Martinique, St. Pierre. 
it killed almost everyone. Um, there was refugees flo uh, flowing down from the hillsides um, and uh, fleeing the mudslides that were coming uh, from the, the steam blast that began the eruption. You can see a little arrow pointing to Martinique and where Mount Pele was. Um, this whole area just completely buried um, in this eruption. You can see here all the, the uh, Caribbean islands here are part of this volcanic arc. It's an oceanic, oceanic convergence um, forming a subduction zone. So all of these beautiful places to visit are all active volcanoes, lots of volcanic eruptions there. The Caribbean plate here sits uh, just south of North American plate and there's subduction taking place between it and the South American plate all along these so-called Lesser Antilles, uh, which are the island arc that makes up uh, the outskirts of the Atlantic Ocean and the boundary between it and the Car Caribbean. Last type of explosive eruption coming out of lava domes. So you'll get um, volcanian, strombolian, volcanian, and even plinium blasts out of these lava domes. What it is, it's a it's a plug. It's a plug at the top of a stratovolcano or a extinct volcano of some sort. Uh, you'll have the eruption take place, and then uh, thick, pasty magma will come up and fill up the, the volcanic neck and plug up the volcano. And what will happen is, from these plugs, uh, later eruptions will occur like little mini later eruptions and they can even be plenty in, in, in nature. Here's a, a picture of a volcanic plug and a lava dome blast coming from Mount St. Helens um, and steam blasts occurring after that large major eruption from 1980. Um, uh, further south on the Cascades is Lassen Peak in California. Northern California has its share of large volcanoes from that subduction zone active uh, just off the coast there. Uh, one such large um, volcano was called Mount Tahama. And Mount Tahama was some 35 meters, uh, 3,500 meters high. And this thing blew up in a major eruption in the past. Um, and so it left behind an ancient caldera. And uh, we'll talk about calderas next time. A massive crater left behind by an eruption of cataclysmic proportion. And you'll see uh, in the underlayings of Mount Tahama, there are all these little plugs that came up and filled in the areas that were erupting in the past from it. And so uh, you'll see these lava domes there. Eagle Peak is one of them, a beautiful place on Earth. This is a picture from that area. Uh, and then Lassen Peak here. Um, Lassen Peak, as I've mentioned, because uh, it is a lava dome that erupted uh, for a series, a period of about three years over from 1914 to 1917. And you had uh, pyroclastic flows and lahars coming from that one. So uh, a pretty uh, nasty deal, these little lava domes. So that is a look at explosive eruptions from Strombolian, the small to moderate eruption, to Volcanian, that clearing the throat of the volcano, and then the Plinians also coming out, uh, this really explosive eruptions from melted magma, rhyolitic and acidic magmas, uh, and forming stratovolcanoes, some of the largest volcanoes on Earth. Um, they don't hold a candle to those uh, uh, peaceful erupting um, shield volcanoes that we see in Hawaii, but they certainly are large and uh, devastating. So that's explosive eruptions.